All right, guys, we've got this set up for a number six port going through the quickie. It's a little loud, so lower whatever you're watching on. Alright guys, got a lot to go over, so let's get going. Okay, this is going to be our quickie port, so we can test three on it and six on it. Now three is a short port, six is a short port. See these divots in the casting? They're all different sizes. I think I know why they're there. You guys can answer me in our uh, comments. Our comments have been really good, guys. Keep it up. So, take a look. One thing that's really nice, I mean, yeah, they're both short, short ports. And I did spend a lot of time getting this section of the runners as close to the same size as I could. Okay, right up until they start to get into the turn and I have trouble getting getting my burr passed, right? So, I did spend a lot of time getting these as close as I could to the same size. So, I think that would help getting relatively even flows. Take a close look how, how close these are. Okay, now this one we had noise. Actually, we had noise all the way down. Let me just write that in. Now we had that on another port as well. But by the time we put the spacer on, and I'm going to put something on the bottom of that uh, intake manifold. Some of the answers we had about these bumps, they're actually bumps. I realize it's hard for you guys to see. These are actually raised up. And some of the answers were they could drill them for EGR or they give you a little more surface area so the heat from the exhaust crossover could boil the fuel better. I think those are all good answers. And if you paid any attention to the flag, there's not a lot happening right here. Okay, over here... The flag is actually going in the wrong direction, right? So all the action is on this side. So I think I'm going to build a stuffer for the center of here to help help the air come through kind of like this, right? That's where it's going to come. It's going to come from the center of the our spacer, and it's going to move over. Okay, we can compare these guys. Actually, take a look. They tur turned out really well. I'm, I'm pretty happy with the way this is. And the swirls are pretty close. You have to remember, you know, every port is a little bit different shape and a little bit different length. So this is, is way better than I would expect uh, to happen. Now, these two are the fin port. So that is the longer 8 
and one that we're showing on this on this one yeah so this one's number one this one's number eight and they're slightly down versus the shorter ports does that surprise me at all not even a little i remember very long time ago i had a low pressure bench uh and i did a, a torque or two and i was surprised that the short runners flowed way better than the long runners so that doesn't that doesn't strike me as unusual here at all but even at that take a look at our our swirls are pretty close let's see this is 350 350 ah much less over here right at 208 7 less flow gives us less swirl okay do I think it'll be a problem? Nope. Because if we get our lift right around 500, we got plenty of swirl. Plenty of swirl. Actually, that was the first thing DV said when he, he saw my flow numbers for the, for these ports uh, before I posted the IOP program uh, on them. He's like, we got plenty of swirl. Exact quote from DV. So, the manifold, first of all, don't ever call me to say you have a manifold like this to get done. It's not happening. It's just a stupid amount of work. And it's a very difficult manifold to, to work on. In reality, this one is easier because you can get to as far as you can get and you're done. Unless you want to cut holes. Now, have I decided on whether I'm cutting holes or not? I haven't decided. I don't know what I'm going to do with this yet. As of right now... The single plane's got quite a few CFM over, over the dual plane, which I, is not really a surprise. Okay? Okay, my friend Brian King uh, made up some drawings for me, and I filled them out with some of my uh, not 100% accurate dimensions that you'll get to look at. This is, uh, this is what he took from my first discussion with him. I don't think he realized that these barrels were right next to each other, literally. So this would be this would be much much smaller if we're going to put the Venturi all the way up high. Now, see, my first my first idea with with the spacer was to really have it neck down and then flare out a lot more towards the bottom, and I want it flaring out to kind of curve it right into these runners I just realized I got the light off on this I hope this even comes out this this video sorry about that guys no wonder why it, it couldn't see anything in that uh, in that thin uh, that thin demo flag demo I should say yeah this is <sighs> my scribble Brian, uh, Brian has a machine shop. He has a CNC machine. He he's nice enough to say he can make these up for us, and uh, that's that's no small amount of work that he's doing for us. So I really appreciate it. Uh, I may have to re redraw these because they're pretty horrible. Okay, this is kind of what I'm talking about as far as the distance here between the original barrels is only about a quarter, uh, an eighth of an inch. So that's 125 thousandths. The original barrels were 1.625 or 1 and 5 eighths, all right? So if we're going to put Venturis here, they're going to have to neck down smaller than that. And the way he had it originally set up was a Venturi and then relatively relatively straight to match the uh, the hole in the intake where I was where I was uh, I machined it out for. Okay, more of my mess. Okay, only an eighth of an inch here. Now, the, the stock barrels are inch and five eighths. Andy spoke about making a, an oval blade for it, which would be very much like this stock spacer that uh, came with the dual plane. Okay, you can see my all my measurements were just using the calipers going from the center of the holes, right? center of the holes and measuring how big 
how big everything is. These two plenums are close, but they're not identical. They are definitely off a few thousands. So, see, I have a lot of scribble here. I don't know if you guys can figure this out, but let me explain it, right? You got an inch and five eighths. You cut that in half, that's point eight one two, point eight one two, right? Two halves. And then we can uh, we can calculate this length here by 0 0.82, 812, 0 0.812, plus 0 0.125. That gives us 1.749. It's probably supposed to be 1.75, right? Okay. And as far as our length for how wide the pad is, it's probably supposed to be 4.025. It measures out 0.022. And as far as the spacing between the bolts, 3.25 sounds like a, a decent number. And this is kind of a strange number here, 1.9. It's probably 1.85. I may have to remeasure all this and uh, and get back to him. But it gives him an idea of where, where to start. And same same deal with the base, okay? The base is designed to match pretty close to what I have on the manifold. It doesn't matter if it's not exact. It's going to get burred anyway on the on the inside and make it fit just right. As of right now, I think he said he would make me two different uh two different spaces, one with the venturi and one relatively open. And we could uh we could probably get DV to test them both. I guess it would depend how they perform on the on the flow badge. The Venturi may take may take a lot of uh, our CFM away if it doesn't if it doesn't help right curve the air into into especially the the, the upper if it doesn't help curve the air into the upper plenum on this you have to remember these aren't these aren't very deep these are quite shallow. Okay, I can measure that for you. Okay, we got our light on now. That's how deep the plenum is, so it's probably 2.5. Yes, I banged up. I banged this up when I was getting that uh, that nasty chunk out of that one runner. I'm probably going to have to uh, hit that with a little epoxy just to have a, a nice uh, surface that, that will seal. You can see, you can see that this was all getting hit by the the grinder because trying to get in, trying to get in and get the the beginning of these runners. Really can't even see them. Was an absolute bear, absolute bear. It's a horrible manifold to work on. Probably one of the hardest manifolds I've ever had to work on. Terrible, absolutely terrible. Do not use it if you don't have to. Use something modern, please. Buy something modern. I'm sure it would eat this thing alive. <sighs> but if you're a purist and you have to run it, it needs a ton of work. A ton. We should probably do a couple uh, a couple questions. What do you guys think we should do as far as plenum inserts? Now, I've already done a little bit of work on this. Now, yeah, it's just a chunk of clay laid laid on the bottom, right? And it's not a perfect shape. It's kind of uh, rounded with flat spots where I pushed it so it wouldn't get sucked down the port. Do you think that would help? It's a good question, right? You guys let me know what you think. Or how about something that's more like a triangle? Right? Wide at the bottom... Comes up to a bit of a point, kind of a divider, to, to make the air go down those stubby ports there, the stubby plenum right to the ports. I think I may make one of each, even if I just make it out of clay. I have to get some fresh clay. My clay is kind of shot. But that's something cool to work on. Uh, I still have more ports in the heads to do. Actually, I have a bunch of guides I got to drill out and redo. 
so I can even get them right on the money like I like them. And I think that brings us, uh, I think that brings us about up to speed. Let me think. Okay, you know what needs to be mentioned? Right, these two are on the fin port. These two are on the quickie port. Even though they're slightly designed different ports, they still wind up flowing damn close to each other. Better than on most engines. Terry Grove is doing a very cool project right now. He's doing like an 83 or an 85 carbureted 5.0 intake. I've worked those intakes. They're absolutely horrendous. They're so small and tight. And he's doing uh, he's doing a radical job on it. I love it. I think it's great. And uh, he mentioned something in that video about, you know, the float is not going to be even <laughs> to all the cylinders. And he's absolutely right. There's nothing, something like this, forget it. It's all over the place, right? Well, if you took a look at that small block Ford intake, the tight runners on the small block Ford, you got to remember, right? This, this runner would go over here and this runner goes over here. So it really has a, it really has a super tight bend. I mean, like, uh, I can't even, probably 120 degree turn. It needs a lot of work to get the air around that turn. But, uh, like I said, I've done those intakes before and they do work. They need a ton of grinding though. I mean, in, in actuality, the way it's set up, it's going to need epoxy. It's going to need epoxy by where the runners, by where the runners come into the The way it's cast, the runners are actually quite small, but he's going to open it up to a decent sized gasket. I don't think there's enough metal there. I, I remember I opened him up to a good size, and I think I needed epoxy when I did mine. All right, guys. Brings us up to speed for now. Have a good night. Thanks for hanging out.